Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire. I'm in my backyard. The sun is shining. The wind chimes have the potential for clanging at any second. So I'm going to keep this brief. It's a beautiful day. Um, but uh, today we're going to talk about rubber moon art stamps uh, as an element of design in the background of your collage work. I'm going to use them as part of my underpainting layer. I'm going to show you how great that they can be. and. Um, that's basically it. So if you've got a minute, we managed to outrun those wind chimes. This is take two, by the way. Let's go check it out. Welcome back. So today we're gonna to talk about using my uh, designs of rubber moon art stamps to create some background elements on this underpainting over um, ephemera background that will eventually be a collage. So I'm going to create these elements at this stage of the underpainting because I'm going to want to overlap them a little bit with collage. So if I want to tuck them behind these flowers I'm, or behind the bird, they need to go down now so that I can apply the collage over the top. So these are part of my base layer um, that I create before I apply collage. So today I'm working with my own designs, as I said, of Rubber Moon art stamps. They are um, vulcanized rubber. They are in, I have all kinds of different sizes and shapes and designs. I'm gonna use flowers in the background of this to suggest more dogwood flowers and some leaves sort of in the background. This is gonna be too big for my composition because this is only an eight by eight, but this is one of my favorite stamps. So I've grabbed a small um, flower I've also got uh, uh, one large leaf and a double small leaf. I've got a lot of other designs of leaves as well with, uh, with Rubber Moon's art stamps, so check them out. I'm going to give you a link below for my stamps with Rubber Moon. Here's another small one. This is actually even smaller than that one. No, that's the same. That's the same. I'm going for a small one. So a small flower and two small leaves. Now I've also got my Rubber Moon Moonlight Tint and Hue Duo ink pads. These are great ink pads because they're permanent and they're fade proof and they're a duo. So they've got light and dark on the same pads. So you can use the white part to lighten up your pink to the shading that you want it. How great is that? So you can make it much lighter pink or much darker pink. I've got, um, the pink one, the name of this one is Milky Way Magenta and Moonlight White. Uh, then I've got a very light green one. The name of this one is Galactic Green and Moonlight White. And then I've got a really dark green one. And this one is Moonlight White and Space Moss, okay? So I'm gonna start out first by adding a couple of additional pink flowers to suggest more dogwood flowers, but very light in the distance so I don't block out all this beautiful ephemera that I have in the background. Um, so I'm going to take, now this is a technique that I learned from KP herself at Rubber Moon. Rather than trying to press the stamp into the pad, you're going to put the stamp down on the desk. You're going to take the pad and ink up the stamp by pressing it into the stamp. That way you can control the amount of pink. You flip it over and you get the white and you lighten up the pink with some white and you can see what you're going to get. You can see how light it is here, light or dark combo. And then you pick the stamp up. And I'm gonna put this one right here to suggest another flower up in this corner. So yeah, you put the stamp right there and you press. And then lift. Now I've got another beautiful little pink flower suggesting more dogwood flowers in the background. I have also got a damp paper towel on hand so that if I put anything down that I don't like, I can wipe it off. Or if I feel like it's too strong, I can dab it back a little bit, make it a little lighter, okay? So I would like to add another flower sort of down here to kind of reinforce this diagonal composition that I've got going on. And this one I might make a little darker. So I'm gonna use a little less white. And remember, I can always tone it back with the paper towel, so it's okay to go a little darker. So I'm just gonna use the pink on this one. And I'm gonna put this one sort of going off the edge down here on the corner. Now I've got a slightly darker flower in the lower right-hand corner and a lighter one in the upper left-hand corner. I love the way this looks with my diagonal. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna put one more going off that top left edge, okay? So again, you can, um, you could also, these are foam, uh, cling foam. They're all very dirty, it's hard for me to show you. When they're clean, they're very white and they're a cling foam. So they will adhere to the back of an acrylic block. So if you wanted to be able to block print it and you didn't like the way that they're very wiggly like this, you can cling them to the back of an acrylic block and then you can peel it off and use your next one and keep using one acrylic block. And Rubber Moon also offers those blocks. But they, they store and stack 
very nicely like this because they're so thin and they don't take up much room. So I love storing them like this and I could get one acrylic block to use to stick them to. But today I'm just using them by hand. So my next um, thing that I wanna do is add a couple of leaves to this. And I've got a very light green and a very dark green. And from experience, I'm gonna use these as a combo because this is too dark and this is too light. And even if I add the white to this, mm, I like the combo of these two together better. So I'm gonna take my leaf stamp, I'm gonna set it down, I'm gonna apply uh, dark green, then I'm gonna go over it with a little light green, come back with a little dark, and again, I've got my towel ready in case it's too dark, and I'm gonna put this one right here and let it go off the edge. So I've got a little subtle green leaf print there. So I'm gonna dab it up with dark again and put another one right here going off the bottom. That one came out a little darker, that's nice. Now I'm gonna take the double small leaf uh, stamp so I can add a couple small leaves, a little dark, a little light, a little dark again. I'm gonna put this one right here. Very nice, that one came out pretty dark. You can see the difference, that's much darker. So I'm gonna go a little lighter, but I like that. So a little lighter, a little less dark, and put another one up here. I'm gonna try pressing just one half of it, see if I can get one leaf. I lost the top of it, but that's okay. I'm gonna put two here. So now I'm adding a few more leaves. I'm gonna take this one out. Whoops. I got to it while it was still wet, so I took that one out. I might like to change the direction of that. So I'm gonna just ink, I'm gonna press it in this time because I'm just gonna ink this small one just like that and change the direction of it. There, I like that. Okay, so I've got a couple of those there and I'm gonna add one more at the bottom here, going in this direction. Perfect. And then one by his foot. Perfect. Okay. So now you can see on my table, if I were to, um, I'm working on the craft mat by joggles.com. It is a uh, six feet of non stick surface that is sold by the foot. And I know I've showed you this before. It is, um, it was on back order, but I believe it's back in stock. But again, if I got, if I get my ink all over the table, whether it's wet or dry, is gonna wipe right off this surface. Put a little cleaner on it. And it's all gonna come right off. So I've always got this beautiful, nice, clean surface to work on. So that is my craft mat. I'll give you a link below. These are my own designs of Rubber Moon art stamps. I'll give you a link below. And also on Rubber Moon's website, you're gonna find these fantastic Moonlight Tint and Hue Duo ink pads. So happy Friday, have a great weekend, and thank you for being here.